This is not a squirrel. This is a squirrel. At least according to some AI systems. We'll tell you why this is significant and what it has to do with security tools called captures. Image recognition algorithms are getting better and better. Maybe you know this from Google Photos. The app scans image and movie files on your phone, analyzes them using AI software, and then saves them into folders. Google Photos created a folder with pictures of my dog for me. From time to time, I even get automatically generated videos. Cute. But also a bit scary. Fun fact, I helped Google's AI get better at this job by clicking on so-called recaptures. You probably all know them. The small programs are supposed to make the internet more safe, but in all likelihood, we we'll soon won't be seeing them anymore. But what exactly are captures? How does Google benefit from captures? Why do we need new ones? And what does the squirrel have to do with all of this? Let's have a look. Website operators are facing a big problem, bots. Approximately 40% of all web traffic is caused by bots and they can do a lot of harm. Let's imagine I run a small online business and I'm not protected against bots. A mean competitor could run several automated bots to slow down or even cripple my entire website with tons of spam, for example. If you want to know more about bots, check out this video here or click the link in the video description. To prevent bots from doing their dirty work, there are so-called captures. That stands for completely automated public Turing tests to tell computers and humans apart. Simply put, captures have the same function as a bouncer. They let humans in, bots unfortunately have to stay outside. To distinguish between humans and bots, the programs ask little questions that can only be answered by a human being. At least as long as there's no technology available that can answer them as well. But more on that later. The two most common methods are texts and images. Google developed the most successful of these services. They call them recaptures and offer them to website operators for free. Over 4.5 million websites all over the world use the service. The program asks users to just click on a checkbox first. The system will verify whether the user is human or not, with some clues such as already known cookies on the computer or from cursor movements within the recapture frame that indicate that the mouse is navigated by a human. If that fails, the user has to answer a short question. The service is not entirely free, of course. The price is paid by the website's users. In a way, they work unpaid for Google. Come again? It's simple. The answers are being used to gather data. Until 2014, Google used the character recognition captures to digitalize books. The hard copies were scanned and saved in a database. Short passages that couldn't be deciphered by the system were used in the recaptures. By showing the same words to multiple users, the system could automatically verify that a word has been transcribed correctly. The respective passage was then added to the digitalized book. Since 2014, Google also uses photos. And you might have guessed it, they aren't picked randomly. A lot of them are taken from Google's massive Street View photo archive. Many of these photos can already be identified by Google's image recognition AI, but some of them are more difficult for the system. These are presented in the recaptures. By telling the algorithm which pictures are showing a bus, for example, we help the algorithm get a bit smarter every time. Those algorithms aren't just useful for fun things like the photo app I mentioned earlier, especially when it comes to autonomous driving. They play a major role. For an autonomous car, it is crucial to distinguish, for example, bicycles from mopeds to adjust the driving style accordingly. Finally, we're getting to the squirrel I mentioned in the beginning. This picture was taken from a database of photos that can't be identified by AI. The photos were collected by scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also known as the MIT. The programs mistake the squirrel for a sea lion. Coming back to autonomous driving, cars would probably rather break for a sea lion than for a squirrel. And that could have serious consequences. <laughs> But the MIT photos are controversial. Some are too blurry, the light conditions are often difficult and some objects are shown in strange positions. The vast majority of photos and videos are nowadays correctly identified by AI image recognition programs. And that's the reason why photo-based captures 
will be a thing of the past very soon. Many bots already passed the test because their AI is too clever. So what about using more difficult captures? Not a great idea, because users could get annoyed by that. The next generation of recaptures is running in the background, without the user noticing anything. Those captures are already used by over 600,000 websites. No annoying quizzes anymore, sounds good. But here's the drawback. The new system gathers a lot more data. Which computer is being used? Which browser? Which operating system? Which cookies are installed on the computer? What payment methods are saved? I could go on for hours. All this detailed data paints a pretty precise picture of the user. That's the so-called digital fingerprint. And this fingerprint, combined with the information of the website someone visits, is worth a lot of money, especially when it's about selling targeted ads. Google already has the pole position here, and with the recaptures V3, they could increase their lead even more. What do you think of the captures that we are having at the moment? Annoying or necessary? Let us know in the comments. And if you've got a digital topic you'd like us to cover, let us know as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.